The folklore in Kid Cryptid wouldn't exist if it weren't for the rich history and vibrant cultures these stories come from. While we do our best to provide accurate information, we recognize that we are, at best, amateurs here. This podcast is best considered for entertainment purposes only, and it comes from a place of love and respect for the peoples behind the lore. Now, on with the show. Happy Halloween! I'm Sean, and I'm here with a new campfire compendium to celebrate the season. I don't know about you, but Halloween is my favorite holiday, and I really enjoyed researching this episode. Hopefully, you enjoy it as much as I did. The jack-o'-lantern is nothing short of a modern Halloween icon. They show up in movies, storefronts, and porches all around the country. But why? When you get right down to it, Hollowing out a pumpkin, carving a face into it, and then sticking a lit candle inside is really kind of strange. Ask most people, and they'll likely shrug and tell you that it's tradition. While it's impressive that people have kept up a tradition without having a clue why, I find it's always nice to have an understanding of where things come from to truly appreciate them. So let's dig into jack-o'-lantern, shall we? The origins of the jack-o'-lantern begin with a turnip. And that, as many things do, begins with a legend. In this case, we have to go all the way back to the 17th century in Ireland, and the story of Stingy Jack. Now you see, old Jack was a miserly drunken blacksmith with a reputation for not paying for his drinks. Well, one night at the pub, he happened to meet the devil himself. Striking up conversation, Jack offers to buy him a drink. Of course, Jack had no intention of actually following through with his offer. When it came time to pay, he tells the devil that he has no money, but that they can trick the barkeep if the devil turns himself into a coin. Not one to shy away from trickery, the devil promptly transforms. However, rather than using the devil coin to pay, Jack puts it in his pocket next to a silver cross. This prevented the devil from being able to change back. Eventually, Jack decided to let the devil out of his pocket but only on the condition that he would leave Jack alone for a year and a day. And, Jack added, that if he should die in that time, the devil would not get his soul. The devil wanting his freedom agreed and angrily left. Well, that year and a day passed, quiet and easy for Jack. But sure enough, as soon as the time was up, Jack ran into the devil walking up the road. Thinking quick, Jack told the devil that he would go with him, but only if he climbed up a nearby tree and got him an apple. Eager to collect a soul, the devil went for the apple. But while he was up in the branches, Jack carved a cross onto the tree trunk, preventing him from climbing down. Once again, he forced the devil to promise to stay away. Only this time it was for ten years. Angrily, the devil agreed. Now by this point, Jack was rather pleased with himself. He'd trick the devil twice, after all. But good luck only ever lasts for so long, and Jack soon ran out. Whether it was too much drink or just his time, Jack died. St. Peter took one look at his sinful soul and turned him away from the gates of heaven. Standing before the gates of hell, Jack awaited his fate. The devil laughed when he saw him. With glee, he pointed out that ten years had not passed since their agreement, which meant Jack was not allowed to enter hell either. Instead, he would be forced to wander the afterlife, forever looking for a final resting place. To light his way on his endless journey, he carved out a turnip and stuck a burning coal in it. As time went on, he became known as Jack of the Lantern. And from there, Jack-o'-lantern. That's a fun little story about the name, but it doesn't really do much to explain why they're the literal face of Halloween. For that, we need to look a little closer at Celtic traditions. Before Christianity took hold, the people of Scotland and Ireland celebrated the end of the harvest season with a festival known as Samhain. Taking place at the midpoint between the autumn and winter solstices, it was believed that during Samhain the barrier between this world and the next was thinner than usual, and that it was possible for spirits to return to earth for the night. 
a great bonfire was built and people would take burning sticks from it to light fires back at home. The original rituals involved animal sacrifices and inviting spirits to dinner. They also involved dressing as animals to scare fairies and other potential harmful beings from capturing the spirits of ancestors who may have crossed over for the visit. The original rituals also involved animal sacrifices and inviting spirits to dinner. They also involved dressing as animals to scare fairies and other potentially harmful beings away, so they wouldn't capture spirits of ancestors who may have crossed over for a visit. Oh, and that midpoint between solstices just happens to land on October 31st. As times changed, celebrations became smaller and more personal. Instead of one big fire, smaller fires were lit at farms, and they stopped sacrificing animals. Other traditions, however, began to take shape. By the Middle Ages, people began carving faces into turnips to leave in front of their homes to scare unwanted spirits away, especially Jack of the Lantern. They told stories of headless ghosts and shape-shifting spirits that haunted the night. In the days leading up to Samhain, people would dress up and go door-to-door to sing songs for the dead. As payment, they'd be given small cakes. Eventually, as people immigrated to the U.S., they brought their traditions with them. Turnip carving quickly gave way to pumpkin carving as the gourd proved to be a perfect medium. They kept wearing costumes and going door to door. Before long, others began participating in spreading the reach of this ancient practice. By the 19th century, Halloween as we know it in America truly began to take shape. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. Here we are today, over a thousand years later, still celebrating the coming of winter on October 31st. We'll put on our costumes and travel door to door. We'll tell ghost stories and warm ourselves by fires. And without a doubt, we'll do it under the watchful glowing eyes of jack-o'-lanterns smiling in the night. Every holiday season deserves a great story. Join a young girl named Charlie as she struggles with her own personal loss while being swept into a whole new world filled with action, mystery, danger, and high stakes adventure. Aunt Nani? Aunt Nani? Come along, you two. She doesn't need our help. Well, what do we have here? Look out, Mift! Incoming! Another human child has arrived. See, now that is interesting. We don't mean you any harm. We've been sent by Adeline. You are what I say you are. Then I suppose I'll have to do something about it. I would not be so dismissive were I as weak and careless as you. <laughs> This holiday season, join Happy Go Lucky and all of our friends from the gigantic adventures of Jeff and Simon, Dice Tower Theater, Elderberry Tales, Pitchforks and Pomegranates, Kid Cryptid, Drive With Us, Top of the Round, Podcast Reviews, Reviews Podcast, Unnecessary Evil, and many more as we bring the next holiday classic to life. Very bright. Very bright. Very bright. Subscribe now. Charlie Saves Christmas. An audio drama podcast opens soon. You'll just have to come back for it. <laughs>